Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you husky! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. There's no one that can make a better cereal than Quaker popped wheat. It's neat. And when you hear that shooting, you're darn tootin'. The Quaker makes the ones shot from guns. And listen, fellas and girls, these February mornings, if an alarm clock doesn't make you rise and shine, here's the breakfast treat that will. A heaping bowl of crisp, fresh Quaker popped wheat or Quaker popped rice topped with lots of milk or thick yellow cream and sliced bananas. Yes, for a swell waker-upper, there's nothing like the toasty, nut-like flavor and tender crispness of Quaker popped rice and Quaker popped wheat. Icy blasts of wind whipping around the mountain peaks of Frizzly Pass drove icy pellets into the faces of two men as they toiled up the trail behind their exhausted team of dogs. Bent double against the pressure of the wind, their feet stumbling and slipping on the trail, they reached the summit of Baldy Mountain and fell exhausted behind some rocks that sheltered them from the wind. The dogs collapsed in furry heaps beside the trail. It was some time before one of the men, with a superhuman effort, dragged himself to his feet. His partner raised his head wearily. Oh, I can't get up, Chris. I, I got to rest some Who's more. asking you to get up? Yeah, well, what are you doing? Just getting out my field glasses. This is the high point of the trail. We can see 15 or 20 miles back with these glasses. You think maybe Sergeant Preston picked up our trail again? Blast him, there he is. Huh? You mean he's after us again, are you sure? He's a long way back, but he's coming. <laughs> he hasn't reached the mountain yet, but he's after uh, us again. What'll we do, Chris? We get into open country, can't get away from Preston. He has a long, hard climb ahead of him. And from here, we go downhill. That'll give us a long start. All I want to do is get that trading post across Crick and get warm again. We're not going to stop at that trading post. Uh, what? See those clouds forming over there? Oh, yeah. Looks like a storm coming up. I hope it's a blizzard. It'll wipe out our trail. We're going to circle that trading post and head for Creesville. Huh? If that storm breaks, the Molly will figure we'll have to hold up at the trading post at Cross Creek, not cut north to Creesville. Yeah. It's what anyone in his right mind to do. Well, we'll fool him. Somehow we'll make it. The blizzard Chris hoped for broke before Sergeant Preston reached Cross Creek, obliterating the trail. The last few miles to the trading post were a heartbreaking struggle for man and dogs. But at last, the Mountie was seated beside the stove, drinking some hot tea which Jean Dupre had given him. King, his big lead dog, was already asleep in the corner. The sergeant stretched gratefully toward the heat. This blizzard she get worse, sergeant. Oh, blizzard. That's all I need. Means I've lost the trail of Chris and Joe. I was sure they'd be here. They must have seen a storm coming. Nobody like you describe was here, sergeant. Only miners and trappers, and all of them I know well. Uh, what they do, these men you chase? Murdered and robbed a man in Dawson City. Their dogs are in bad shape. You could tell by the condition of their tracks before the storm broke. That's why I was sure they'd be here. Hey, hey, hey someone come. Look out the window, Jean. It may be the men I'm after. Wait. <laughs> no, it is Tom Cleary, the freighter. He is one day overdue. Hello, Tom. Come in. What a storm. Hello, John. 
Tom, I was beginning to worry about you. Well, I got delayed. Hello, Tom. Oh, Sergeant Preston. What are you doing around this territory? He is after two murderers. You didn't happen to meet any strangers on the trail, did you, Tom? Yeah, come to think of it, I did. Huh? This blizzard was starting, and they had a sorry-looking dog team, so I wanted to tell them they'd never make Creesville. But they wouldn't stop to talk. Well, I didn't think they'd head north. How many dogs did they have? Well, only four, I think. They started out with five, and one died on the trail. Can you remember what they looked like? Well, didn't get much of a look at them, all bundled up in fur parkas. One was quite a bit bigger than the other. That's about all I can tell you. That must be Chris and Joe, so they're headed for Creesville. Well, they'd not know which way they're headed right now if they haven't reached shelter. I'm stuck here myself until this blizzard's over. Then I'll go to Creesville. Meanwhile, Chris and Joe had lost the trail to Creesville. While they wandered aimlessly, they came to an isolated cabin. It was small and crude, but it represented shelter. They rapped on the door and were invited inside by a huge giant of a man. His companion was a very large dog. You live here all alone? Me and Rex. You mean this big wolf dog? Rex is no wolf. He's my only friend. I don't like men. How did you find this place? No one ever finds it. How we, uh... We just bumped into it accidentally in the blizzard. Nobody can find it. It's far from the trail, in the valley. Well, you let us stay here, won't you, till the blizzard is over? Did you feed your dog? No, we gotta get warm first. We're freezing to death. If you could just give us something hot to drink... I but... feed your dogs first, then you. You better let me do it later. A couple of them are mean. You gotta be careful. No, oh, no. No dog ever bites moose. I'll feed them. Chris, I, I think he's crazy. He has a wild look in his eye, all right. He must be almost seven feet tall and as wide as a Kodiak bear. You think we're safe here? I'd rather take a chance with a maniac than with that blizzard. He's probably just crazy from living alone out here in the wilderness. Oh, I, I wouldn't care if he wasn't so big. He, he could crush your arm in one of those big hands. Uh, hey, this dog of his is a beauty. What a sled dog he'd make. Yeah. We could use him. Maybe we'd be smart to make friends with him. Yeah. Come here, Rex. Come here, I said. Careful, Joe. He's showing his teeth at you. Let him get away with that, and we'll never be able to handle him. Hand me that poker. Huh? All right. Be careful, Joe. Here. Yeah. Come here, you cur. <laughs> Growl at me, will you? I'll show you. Don't touch that hey. dog. I'll kill you. I am kill you. Oh, oh, stop. He wasn't hitting you. Oh, please. Let me go. I, I was only going to bet him. Why did you take the poker? Well, I, I was going to poke up the fire. I, I like your dog. I was going to bet him. Uh, I uh, thought you were going to hit Rex. Uh, Anybody hits Rex, I kill him. Rex is my friend. Uh, sure, uh, sure, Moose. I, I want him to be my friend, too. Did you... You feed our dogs? I came to get more food for them. Put them in my shed. They're skinny and hungry. You don't feed them. We had a hard, long trip. I feed them a lot, really. Come, Rex, you come with me. Oh, Oh, that was close, Joe. I thought you were a goner for a minute. Yes, so did I. I'm still shaking, and not from the cold. I hope this blizzard clears up and we can get out of here. Yeah. But when we leave, we're taking that dog with us. Are you crazy? Moose would tear us to pieces if we even touched him. I'll figure out some way to do it. We need a lead dog and a good one. You think Preston will find out we came north instead of going straight west? Yeah, I suppose so. Meeting that freight man on the trail was a piece of bad luck. He was heading for the trading post at Cross Creek. Ten to one, he met the Mountie there. There's a police cabin at Creesville. Oh, yeah. I remember right at the edge of town. Preston may stop there for a while, trying to pick up our trail. We're safe here if Moose, or whatever he called himself, is telling the truth about this cabin being hidden in the valley. I wouldn't say we were safe here. Not with that monster maniac. I'll handle him. Now, as soon as the weather clears, one of us better get to Creesville and see if Preston is there. Uh, Huh? And you'd better go. I have some plans of my own to carry out here. Oh, what plans? I got some thinking to do before I tell you, but we may be able to get Moose's dog and get rid of Sergeant Preston, too. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Hello? Hello? Say, 
Fellows and girls, Hello, that Dave. noise you hear is Pat, my talking parrot. Hello. I brought him along today to perform for you. Now, I'll ask him a question, and he will... Pat from Guns! Now, now, wait, Pat, you're ahead of the act. You're supposed to wait till I ask you a question about Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the swell-tasting, crispy, fresh cereals that are... Pat from Guns! Hey, give me a chance, will you? Because I was going to ask you how Quaker's Choice Premium Grains, those big, flavor-rich, king-size kernels, are loaded into... Shot from guns! Pat Parrot! Stop interrupting me before I can even ask you how those Choice Premium Grains are actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them bigger and better tasting. So go ahead. Now let's hear the answer. Oh, so now you won't talk. You mean the restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron? Well, Pat Parrot, so you too know. Hey, listen, kids. For breakfast every morning, get wise to swell tasting, nourishing, Quaker puff wheat, Quaker puff rice, shot from guns. Now to continue. The blizzard raged on through the night and the following morning, but Sergeant Preston left Cross Creek before it stopped. He made his way to Creesville and made countless fruitless inquiries. It was evening when he went to the Mountie Post at the edge of town. The following day, Joe left on snowshoes for Creesville. Chris used this time to try to ingratiate himself with Moose and become friendly with a simple-minded giant and his dog Rex, who seemed to be the center of Moose's existence. The thing that would send him into a maniacal rage was the thought of any harm coming to the animal. All dogs seemed to have a place in his affections. Your dog team, they're still weak. You stay here until they're better. Yeah, I would be glad to, Moose. I wouldn't think of making them pull a sled in their condition. Say, I saved a piece of liver for Rex from dinner. Is it all right if I give it to him? Yes. You like Rex, don't you? I sure do. And he's beginning to like me, I think. Here, Rex, come get this liver, boy. Come on, Take boy. it, Rex. He likes you. That's a boy. It's the first time he'd take anything out of my hand. Maybe I shouldn't have given it to him, though. We're getting short of fresh meat, but I'd rather see him have it than eat it myself. Tomorrow I go hunting. You want me to come with you? No. I hunt better alone. I like to hunt alone. But you can't take Rex in that deep snow, can you? You better let him stay here with me. You'll have to use snowshoes. Yes, Rex better stay here. Ah, that's right. Oh, hi, Joe. Hi. Uh, there's a long trek. You find your way to Creesville? Yeah. I followed the creek just the way you told me, Moose. I followed it back, too, or I never would have found this place. Nobody ever finds this cabin. Now I'll get wood for the wood box. Come, Rex. Oh, oh, oh. boy. Oh, oh. I got news for you, Chris. Bad news. Did you see the police cabin? Yeah. I did just like you said. Use the field glasses, but didn't go near it. There was smoke coming from the chimney. I didn't see any signs of pressing of the dogs, but the snow was trampled around the place. He must be there. Good. What do you mean, good? He must have left Cross Creek before the blizzard stopped. He knows we're around here. He'll be on our trail again, and soon. Maybe not. Huh? I told you I had a plan, and it's working out fine. Moose is going hunting tomorrow. I sort of planted the idea in his head. And he's leaving Rex here. Well, I don't see When Moose that's... comes back from hunting, Rex will be gone. I'll tell him Preston stole him. He doesn't know Preston. I asked him. He doesn't know money from anyone else. All the better. We can tell him where Preston's staying. The police cabin in Creesville. Moose will take over from that point. There'll not be enough left of that Molly to fill a boot when Moose gets through with him. By then, we'll be well on our way. Late the following afternoon, Chris James lay on a cot in Moose's cabin, a bandage around his head. Joe sat beside him, his hands clenched nervously. I'm scared, Chris. Moose will be back any minute. Maybe he'll kill us. Relax. All we got to do is keep our story straight. Moose is a kid. He'll believe what we tell him. You sure you covered your tracks when you took Rex to that field? Sure I covered them. Anyway, it's dark and Moose will not stop to look for tracks. 
He'll head straight for Preston's cabin in Creesville. Yeah, if only Rex didn't get loose. He can't get loose. He's chained in the cave right near the trail. We'll pick him up and hitch him to the team when we start tonight. Hey, here's Moose. Oh, hi, Moose. How was the hunting? Tonight we eat venison. Rex! Where's Rex? Oh, uh, Moose, you didn't see Chris there in the cut. Huh? His head, uh, a bandage. But Rex, where's Rex? Oh, I'm sorry, Moose. I did everything I could. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, where's my dog? Oh, I, uh, I was out chopping wood this afternoon, Moose. When I came back, I saw Chris lying in front of the cabin unconscious. Huh? A man was putting Rex on a sled. What? Rex was stunned. I, I guess the man must have hit the dog over the head with something. Hit Rex? I'll kill him. I'll kill him. Well, I, I tried to stop him, but he pulled a gun on me. Said he'd shoot me if I followed him. I, I had to take care of Chris. The man drove off toward Creesville. I'll find him. I'll tell him to pieces. I know where he lives, Moose. I saw him coming out of his cabin when I went to Creesville the other day. Where? Where? I'll kill him. I'll kill him. Now, listen, Moose. You remember that new cabin that was built at the edge of town going into Creesville from here? Yeah, yeah, I know. That's where he lives. I do now. I'll get him. He's liable to shoot you, Moose. Don't give him any warning. He'll not shoot Moose. He hurt Rex. He stole him. He'll not have time to shoot. I'll kill him. I'll kill him. In the police cabin at the edge of Creesville, Sergeant Preston was getting ready for bed. The Mountie had spent a hard, fruitless day scouring the territory, questioning everyone he met for information about Chris and Joe. King, his big lead dog, lay on the floor watching as the sergeant unbelted his holster and cartridge belt, put them on the table, and sat down on the cot wearily to take off his boots. Well, get a good night's sleep, King, old boy, and get an early start in the morning. Suddenly the door burst open, and the huge fur-clad figure of Moose stood framed for a moment. His head almost touching the ceiling, his face contorted with rage, his huge hands stretched forward like talons, ready to tear. He lurched toward Sergeant Preston, growling like a maddened Kodiak bear. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. You hit my dog, Rex. You stole him. I'll kill you. The Mountie, frozen with shock and surprise, sat motionless as the giant advanced toward him. I'll kill you. I'll tear you to pieces. Oh! Then suddenly, like a streak of gray lightning, the body of King streaked upward, his huge jaws clamping on the big hand stretched toward his master. With a flick of the great bear-like arm, Moose tossed the dog across the room. King hit the wall, lay stunned for a moment. Sergeant Preston, about to spring forward, checked himself suddenly. The big man before him had stopped. The look of maddened rage on his face had changed to one of bewilderment, and his voice was filled with almost childish wonder and disbelief as he looked at his hand. He... he bit me. He was trying to save my life. But I... I like dogs. They like me. They... they never bite me, never. I hope I didn't hurt him. I wouldn't hurt a dog. I'd better see if I hurt him. No, don't. He's getting up. He's all right. Here, King. It's all right, fella. Heel boy. He's grabbing at me. He doesn't like me. All dogs like me, but he... He knows who tried to kill me. King's my best friend. Like... Like Rex and me, huh? Rex? What... What did you do with Rex? Where is he? I didn't steal your dog. Why would I want him when I have one like King? They said you took him, that you hit him with a club. I never hit a dog with a club in my life. I like dogs as much as you do. You think King would be my friend if I did things like that? Yes, he's your friend. What's your name? Moose. Moose? What? I, I can't remember. Just moose, I guess. Well, moose, you'd better let me bandage your hand. Oh, it's nothing. It's just a scratch. Your dog had a right to do it. Rex would do it. Of course he would, and I'd be just as angry as you were if someone stole King from me. Now sit down and let me fix your hand. <laughs> Who told you I took Rex? One was Chris. I, I can't remember the other. Chris? Was his last name James? I'm not sure. Was the other man called Joe? Yeah, yeah, that's right. They're the men I'm looking for. They must have lied to me about you. They certainly did if they said I took Rex. They may be the ones who took your dog. Where are they? At my cabin about five miles back in the woods. They got lost in the blizzard. If, 
If they took Rex, what did they do with him? We'll find out. We'll go back to your cabin. I doubt we'll find them there, but I can pick up their trail. Bright northern light spilled across the sky, lighting the trail as Sergeant Preston and Moose neared the cabin in the wilderness later that night. The Mountie had his sled ready for travel, as he was sure Chris and Joe would be gone. As the dog team neared the cabin, everything was quiet. Looking! Place seems deserted, Moose. Yes, Dogs in the woodshed would have barked if they were there. I'll take you to the shed. They probably left just after you did. See? The door's open. They're gone. They took Rex. I'll kill them. They must have hidden Rex somewhere. Now, you'd better get some sleep, Moose. I'll follow their trail. No, no. I gotta know if they took Rex. Will you know Rex's tracks when you see them? Oh, sure. I know his tracks. Well, come on, then. We'll follow their trail to the place where they hid Rex. The tracks led Preston and Moose to a cave. There was evidence that Rex had been there, but now the big dog was nowhere to be seen. Moose wanted to continue on the trail with the Mountie, but Preston said, No, Moose, I'm not going to take you with me. You go back to your cabin. I'll bring Rex back to you, I promise. It was the following day. Chris and Joe were heading west. Their progress had slowed in spite of the addition of Rex to their team. The other dogs couldn't keep up his pace. They had covered a wide expanse of rolling plains and were approaching some pine woods. I can't get any speed out of these dumb mutts. Mush! Get along! Chris, I have a funny feeling that we're being followed. Oh, you always have a funny feeling about something. But maybe Moose didn't kill Preston. Maybe he What else can we do but head for the border as fast as we can? I'll quit your yapping. I know that Monty's going to catch us if Moose didn't kill him. Ah. Whoa! Whoa, whoa. Look, just to make you happy, we'll climb one of these pine trees at the edge of the clearing and have a look through the field glasses. We can see a long way back from here. Sergeant Preston entered the pine forest a short time later. King was running free ahead of the team. As the trees grew thicker, the Mountie proceeded cautiously. <laughs> Suddenly, from the lower branches of a thick pine tree, a shot rang out. Sergeant Preston felt a hot sting in his shoulder, and the impact spun him around and knocked him down behind the sled. A second bullet whizzed over King's back. The big dog charged into the bushes, and there was a sudden cry as he leaped. Preston hey, reached me. painfully for his Get revolver, but was stopped by the voice of Chris James. I'll reach that gun, Preston. I have you covered. Chris. You're looking right into the muzzle of the gun that's going to send you to kingdom come. They'll get you for this, Chris. Nobody ever killed a Mountie and lived long afterwards. This time it's going to be different. Chris raised his gun slightly, pointing it straight between the eyes of the Mountie, when suddenly two great arms circled around him from behind. His gun dropped to the ground as he was crushed in a mighty grip, and the voice of Moose bellowed in his ear. I got you. I'll kill you. You stole Rex. Oh, help me. Moose, stop. where'd you come from? Oh. Moose, don't kill him. Let go of him, Moose. Ah, oh, he stole my dog. Moose, oh. stop him. If you want to stay with Rex, you can't kill Chris. Oh. Uh, what? What did you say? Help. Moose, if you kill him, I'll have to arrest you, and you'll not have Rex with you in jail. Uh, drop him. Uh, no. I, I drop him. I do as you say. Help. Take this dog away. Moose, keep an eye on Chris. I'll see what's going on. Uh, uh, take this dog off me. All right, King. Let him up, boy. On your feet, John. Put your hands up and walk out of these bushes. Oh, that dog, he, he must weigh more than I do. You got him, huh? Yes, Moose. Glad you were on hand. How'd you get here? I followed you. I, I had to get Rex. Oh. Lucky thing for me, you disobeyed orders. I, I'll sit here on the sled and keep them covered. Good impression here. Are you all right? A little weak. I stopped a bullet with my shoulder, but I'll be all right. Moose, here, take these handcuffs. Put them on those prisoners. All right. You come here. You first. Now, wait. Wait, Moose, wait. Don't look at me like that. I could squeeze these cuffs so tight on your wrist. No, 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 no. Where's my dog? Where's Rick? He's all right. He's all right, I tell you, Moose. He's with our dog team just ahead on the trail. I'll find out. Here, Rex. Here, fella. He told the truth, Moose. All right. Now the other one. Chris is coming, to. I'll handcuff him before he gets ideas. Sergeant! Sergeant! Chris, you and Joe are under arrest in the name of the crown. There's Rex. There's my dog with that team. Oh, Rex. Oh, oh, there. Easy, boy. Easy. Rex, this is Sergeant Preston's dog. His name was King. Rex and King seem to like each other. Sergeant Preston, you were hurt. And there's two prisoners. I'd like to help take these crooks to jail. Why, uh, 
thanks, Moose. That was spoken like a lawman. Aye. With you and Rex helping, we'll have no trouble. Line him up, King. <laughs> this case is closed. Sergeant Preston will return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. For breakfast this morning, was your family treated to delicious, nourishing Quaker popped wheat or Quaker popped rice? You mothers can't miss when your family comes to the breakfast table and finds the one shot from gun. Yes, everybody, dad, junior, mom, grandma, goes for the toasty nut-like flavor of the wholesome natural grains of wheat and rice. Notice he said natural grains because they are never coated with factory sweetener. After all, some like their cereal not so sweet, some like it ever so sweet. And that's the beauty of Quaker popped rice and Quaker popped wheat. The whole family can sweeten them with sugar to suit their own special taste. So for a delightful breakfast treat that dad and mom and everybody likes to eat, Pour out big bowls of delicious Quaker popped rice or Quaker popped wheat. And top with milk or cream and sliced bananas or chilled fruit. Look at your store for the big red and blue packages with the sealed inner lining that keeps Quaker popped wheat and rice as crisp as can be. And now, here he is, Sergeant Preston. Reporting for duty, Inspector. On your way back from Blue Eagle's village, Sergeant, stop in Reindeer Ridge to see Constable Diamond. Is he having trouble, sir? He has a valuable map in his possession and expects trouble. It may be more than he can handle. I'll do my best to help him, sir. Sergeant Preston is met with gunfire when he enters Reindeer Ridge. Two mysterious killers are determined that he'll not leave town alive. Be sure to hear this next exciting adventure. These radio dramas, a feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. Sergeant Preston of the Yukon is brought to you every Tuesday and Thursday at the same time by Quaker Popped Wheat and Quaker Popped Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from guns. Hello, folks. This is your friend, Aunt Jemima. I know you like my extra light Aunt Jemima pancakes, but for a change of flavor, I know you'll also like my tangy buckwheat mix. Mm-hmm. Just add milk, and you'll bake the most wonderful buckwheat cakes with just the right amount of old-time buckwheat goodness. Not a speck too little or too much. And light? My buckwheat cakes are so light and digestible, Children can just eat and eat. For variety, try both kinds of my mixes. My pancake mix for fluffy light Aunt Jemima pancakes and my buckwheat mix for golden Aunt Jemima buckwheats. Remember, there's nothing more tempting in this whole wide world than Aunt Jemima's buckwheat light. And say, why don't you try some today? <laughs> This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Popped Wheat and Quaker Popped Rice. So long. Listen tomorrow at the same time to the Green Hornet, brought to you by the drink that makes you feel fresh again, delicious Orange Crush. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.